My cat's been vomiting, having diarrhea, throwing up. Um, he's real skinny too, and you know, I went down to the feed store, and I got me some antibiotics that I've been giving him for two weeks, but they ain't working. I mean, it was a horse antibiotic, but you know, I figured they all the same. Do I really gotta bring my cat into the vet? Vets are so expensive, they just out for my money. I get calls like that every day. That was my rant for today. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and become part of the Birch family. Today we're gonna be talking about the top five silent killers of cats. The reason why I want to talk about this is because cats are a lot different than dogs. I know my dog, even if she has like a splinter in her foot, she acts like it's the end of the world. Not all dogs are like that, but most of them are. They're very vocal. They let you know when something's wrong. Cats, on the other hand, are not like that at all. Usually when a cat starts showing signs and symptoms of a sickness, there's already been some kind of permanent damage. Cats usually don't let you know that they're sick or something's wrong with them until something's like really, really wrong with them. And at the end of the video, we will talk a little bit about how to catch these things early and what you can do, all that kind of fun stuff. I love all little critters, but there's just a special place in my heart for cats. Number one is chronic kidney disease. This is one of the number one silent killers of cats. Chronic kidney disease basically means that 75% of both kidneys are ineffective and not working. Common symptoms of this is going to be excess drinking, excess urination, hiding, acting lethargic, weight loss, and bad breath. Your kidneys is what filters out toxins, and when the kidneys aren't working, those toxins build up in the system, which cause ulcers in the mouth, ulcers in the stomach, and the esophagus, which cause bad breath. Thankfully, with proper management, cats with chronic kidney disease can live for years after their diagnosis. If your cat is diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, your veterinarian may want frequent blood work on them. We can do subcutaneous fluids, which is giving fluids underneath the skin. Your veterinarian may prescribe your cat a prescription diet like Hill's KD or the Royal Canin Renal Support. Number two, hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is a endocrine disease where the thyroid gland produces too much thyroid hormone. This is mostly seen in middle-aged to geriatric cats, and the symptoms of hyperthyroidism are very similar to the symptoms of chronic kidney disease. Constantly needing to drink or constantly needing to go TT. Hyperthyroidism increases the metabolism of cats, which makes them them need to eat all the time. And even though they're eating all the time, they're not gaining any weight. Thankfully, treatment for hyperthyroidism is very effective. We usually put kitty cats on a medication called methmazole, or veterinarians will change their diet to a prescription diet called YD that you can get through science diet. <laughs> Seriously, dogs? Some cats do undergo surgery to get their thyroid glands removed, but that's usually very rare. Number three, diabetes mellitus. Nothing is more satisfying than picking up an obese cat and just having all of that fluff and fat to cuddle with. But no matter how cute it is, obesity in cats is a very serious problem. With diabetes, the pancreas fails to secrete adequate amounts of insulin, or there's a resistance to insulin. Now, insulin is a natural hormone that drives sugar into your cells. As a result, of the body starving for glucose, the body makes more and more glucose. Treatment for diabetes can be really costly because it does require you to give insulin injections twice a day to your cat. And some cats are not good for injections. It also requires a change in diet to a high protein, low carbohydrate diet. Science Diet makes a glucose slash weight management prescription food called MD. And also Royal Canin makes a prescription food called Glycobalance. Along with the change in food, your veterinarian may require frequent visits to the vet and also blood work to check your pet's glucose. With proper care, cats with diabetes mellitus do reasonably well. However, once diabetic complications start to occur, things like diabetic ketoacidosis or hyperglycemic syndrome, diabetes mellitus can become life-threatening. Number four is cardiac disease. Heart disease can be really frustrating in cats because dogs that develop heart disease, you can usually hear a heart murmur, and in cats, that's not the case. In fact, it's estimated that 50% of cats that have heart disease, you can't hear their heart murmur with a stethoscope. Symptoms of heart disease are going to be when your cat is panting, has a heart arrhythmia, sometimes you can hear a heart murmur, increased respiration rate, open mouth breathing, difficulty breathing, blue-tinged gums, sometimes cats will pass out or 
collapse. Once cardiac disease is diagnosed in cats, depending on how severe it is, some cats need frequent oxygen therapy. Your veterinarian may put your cat on diuretics or blood pressure support or even heart medications. Unfortunately, a long-term prognosis for cats with cardiac disease is very poor. You can never cure heart disease. You can just maintain it and keep it from getting any worse. The only exception to this is when the cardiac problems are due to hyperthyroidism, which often gets better when the hyperthyroidism is treated. And finally, number five. Unfortunately, as dog and cat start to live longer lives, a lot of veterinarians are seeing a lot more cases of cancer. The most common type of cancer in cats is gonna be gastrointestinal cancer, which is often due to lymphosarcoma. Clinical signs of cancer can be anything from weight loss, difficulty breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, acting lethargic, abdominal distension or bloating, a loss in appetite. Once diagnosed, the prognosis for cancer is very poor. And as with all of these silent killers, the sooner you catch it, the better quality of life your veterinarian can provide your pet. A lot of signs and symptoms of all of these diseases are very similar. That's why when people call and they're like, oh my God, my cat's not eating, he's throwing up. What is he? I don't know. You should probably bring him in so we can do a physical exam on him. Why can't you just tell me over the phone? Because that's not how it works. We ask you to bring your pet to the vet because we have to examine them to be able to figure out what's wrong. So how are you supposed to diagnose your pet over the phone if you ain't never seen it? You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna let you guys know what I personally recommend to catch these things early. My cat, I personally do lab work on him every single year. A lot of veterinarians these days are offering blood work when you get your annual set of vaccines. The lab work that I do on my cat is sent off to our lab and clinics do that because it is less expensive for the pet owner. This is a great way, a great way to catch early diseases in your pet. I'll have a list down below of the lab work that I send off on my cat every single year. If you're interested in asking your veterinarian about it, or if your veterinarian does offer blood work with your annual vaccines, then you can see if there's anything in my list that you want to add to your list. I think doing lab work on your pet yearly with its annual vaccines is one of the best things that you can do as a pet owner. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.